Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we continue with the book Baby the Duckling Fairy by Daisy Meadows. Chapter 3 Kidnapped. Oh yes, and for today I have a new bookmark. It was made by Kid and presented to my kid by, by the schoolmate. So look, it's really amazing, right? So if you want to, uh, to make your own bookmark, you can do that. And if you want to appear, if you want your bookmark to appear on this channel, you can email it to me. The email address is below the video in the description. All right, let's start. Kidnapped. The fairies and Francis led Rachel and Kirsty to a daisy-filled meadow. A little white lamb came bouncing over to them. It's as if she has springs in her legs, said Rachel, laughing at the sight. And look, she has the same tint of gold in her wool as splashy. This is Fluffy, my magical lamb, said Elodie. She is adorable, said Kirsty, stroking Fluffy's soft coat. Next, they met Frisky the foal. Penelope had to coax him out of the little stall at first. He is a bit shy, she said, as Frisky snuggled into her arms. He is lovely, said Rachel in a gentle voice. Soon Frisky was nuzzling Rachel's arm and she felt as if she had made a new friend. Come and meet Chompy, said Billy. The magical baby goat made everyone laugh by trying to push his nose into Kirsty's pockets. He's very curious, Billy said. I don't mind, said Kirsty with a giggle. Just then, Splashy came flapping out of the pond to join them, and everyone giggled as the magical babies wobbled and waddled around together on the bright green grass of the farm. There are plenty more animals to see, said Francis. Come and meet the cows. There's a brand new baby calf that I'm sure you'll love. The fairies followed Francis towards the barn, leaving the magical babies playing. Inside, a little calf was standing beside his mother. He looked at the visitors and blinked his big brown eyes. This is Toffee, said Francis, in a soft voice. He is only one day old. One by one, the fairies fluttered over to Toffee and stroked his brown coat. At first, he was shy and pressed close against his mother. But after a little while, he relaxed. Soon, he was nuzzling the fairies and making happy, snuffly noises. Suddenly, a rough cackle rang out across the farm. Toffee gave a jolt of shock and pressed against his mother again. I recognize that laugh, said Rachel in alarm. Francis and the fairies zoomed out of the barn and a horrible sight met their eyes. 
Jack Frost and three goblins were standing on the grass in the middle of the farm. Frisky was tucked under Jack's arm, and each of the other magical animals was under the arm of a goblin. Jack Frost was smiling his cruelest smile. Oh no, said Debbie. Stop, thieves, Rachel called out. Jack Frost gave another cackle of laughter. I don't take orders from silly little fairies, he stated. These animals do not belong to you, said Francis in a very stern voice. Put them down at once. Jack Frost replied with a long, loud raspberry. Shan't, he snapped. My snow goose and her baby snowdrop need some friends, so I'm going to make my very own pretty farm at my ice castle, starting with these animals. You can't just take these animals, Penelope exclaimed. They are our friends, and this is their home. Jack Frost ignored her and turned to his goblins. Meet me at my petting farm, he ordered. Here's some magic to get you there. I have to go and see my snow goose now. He disappeared in a bolt of blue lightning, but the three goblins looked at each other with disobedience on their faces. They are glowing blue, said Rachel in astonishment. That's because Jack Frost has given them each a tiny bit of his magic, said Debbie. Goblins with their own magic, said Elodie. I don't like the sound of that. I want all the cuddles for myself, the goblin holding splashy was saying. Me too, said the one with fluffy in his arms. But how can we keep the babies away from Jack Frost? Let's go and hide in the human world, said the third goblin, who was struggling with a wriggling chompy. You mustn't do that, said Kirsty. Those animals belong here. Too late, shouted the goblins. You can't tell us what to do, and Jack Frost won't be able to find us when we hide away. We'll be the most famous goblins in Goblin Grotto. They vanished in a flash of blue, taking the magical babies with them. We have to get back to the human world, said Debbie, with a wave of Debbie's wand and a whoosh of fairy dust. The girls found themselves standing once again beside the pond at Greenfield's farm. Debbie was still with them, her eyes blazing. Poor Splashy will be so scared, she exclaimed. That horrible Jack Frost and those naughty goblins, how dare they steal our little friends away? I'm sure Splashy knows that you will come and save him, said Rachel, trying to comfort the little fairy. It's not just Splashy I'm worried about, Debbie went on. He helps me to look after ducklings 
everywhere and keep them out of, t- of trouble. Without him, I don't know how to take care of them. Just then, the ghost noticed that there was a lot of noise coming from the pond. All the grown-up ducks were swimming around in circles and quacking loudly. Are they looking for something? asked Kirsty. I can't see a single duckling, Rachel exclaimed. This pond was full of them last time when we were here. Oh, Kirsty, where are all the ducklings? Thank you for your listening and reading. Next time, we will continue to read this book and move to chapter 4. Please like this channel, subscribe and ring the bell if you want to be informed about the updates. See you next time. Bye-bye.